welcome to this program. Thank you. I, yes, uh, you mentioned to me the dream that we are in Iceland we should become a, a vanguard of publishing freedom. <laughs> Uh, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. So we um, and they were presenting this idea, which they called uh, Switzerland of bytes, which was basically to take uh, the tax haven model and uh, transform it into the transparency haven model. Why doesn't Iceland become the centre for publishing mm. uh, in the world? Because it's going to be. Great. Julian and I, we were just throwing that idea out, just declaring on national television that we thought this would be the next business model for Iceland. So that felt pretty weird. Then realizing the next day that uh, everyone wanted to talk about it. Iceland has seen uh, some of the problems that happen when um, society becomes too secret. Wikileaks gave us the nudge that we needed. We had had this idea, but we didn't know what to do with it. And they came and told us. And that is an incredibly valuable thing. WikiLeaks now team up with Icelandic activists and parliamentarians and together draw up a proposal that would transform Iceland into a haven for journalism. Herbert and I and Birgit Jonsdottir and Rob Kongreip and Julian Sange, the five of us sat in this hotel room for about four or five hours and wrote the entire proposal from scratch. The proposal is adopted unanimously by Iceland's parliament. Just getting a bill accepted in the parliament is nearly impossible. And this is actually very, uh, this is a huge victory for the parliament uh, to have a proposal of this nature passed through the parliament with uh, um, everybody saying yes. It's also a victory for WikiLeaks, who are now not only using disclosures as a weapon, but also directly influencing freedom of expression laws. The entire hacker world behind WikiLeaks is growing increasingly confident that their visions will lead to an improved society. Well, I think people that are dealing with systems, and technologically oriented people are dealing with systems, they understand systems pretty well and if you look at society that's an, just yet another system. The people involved with Wikileaks are, are exactly the same as uh, me and, and the other people who are fighting this fight in that they are information activists first and foremost. They believe in the, the power of information and power of knowledge and the importance of allowing everybody to have both of those. Perhaps it's similar convictions that prompt a young former American hacker to make one of the most crucial decisions of his life. Bradley Manning, serving as an intelligent analyst with the US Army in Iraq early 2010, has, just like millions of other Americans in the military or civil service, access to a massive database of classified information he discovers indications of crime and corruption and tells another hacker, Adrian Lamo, about it. Manning writes that he sent hundreds of thousands of military and diplomatic reports to WikiLeaks, the biggest leak ever. Manning puts his faith in WikiLeaks. However, Lamo reports their chat to the military. Manning now risks a 52-year jail sentence. Many of the facts are still unclear. One thing is certain. At this point in time, WikiLeaks receive documents with the same material that Manning is charged of having leaked. We make a commitment to 
our sources that we will represent their material to the public uh, to the best of our ability and achieve maximum political impact for the risks that they take. WikiLeaks are in possession of explosive material, too big in fact for them to handle alone. Assange decides to stake all of his resources in one move. We were sitting at a cafe in Reykjavik and he basically just flipped over his uh, laptop and told me, well, you gotta see something very interesting. I was quite shocked. This was uh, instant, so that's something that I recognized instantly as a extremely important and strong material. This is what the crew of an American attack helicopter see while out on patrol in Baghdad. There's a group of men on the street below. Two of them work for the international news agency Reuters. The driver, Saeed Shma, and the cameraman, Namir Nur El Dian. What annoys me the most is when people abuse their power and harm innocents, and they didn't actually need to do it. Roger that. Uh, we have no personnel east of our position. For me, uh, personally, somebody that had spent so much effort in to try to stop this war, um, that at least if this would be shown to people, that it might give people enough uh, motivation to try to stop the next one. All right, we'll be engaged. Roger, go ahead. I'm gonna, I can't get them now because they're behind that building. It shocked, what shocked me with the video was the, uh, how uh, the high resolution, the quality of it, uh, the uh, excessive use of force to shoot people with uh, hollow 30 millimeter bullets that are designed to uh, penetrate uh, armored vehicles and tanks, uh, basically shot to pieces. Let me know when you have it or shoot. Light them all up. Come on, fire! Hey, Roger. Different people argue that it was right for the United States to be in Iraq wrong to be in Iraq, but nonetheless, in this incident, even if you argue that it was right for the United States to be in Iraq, even if it was right for them to be in that suburb at that time with a helicopter overlooking this wounded man crawling the street, it was not helpful for the United States for that wounded crawling man to be shot. The Reuters employee, Saeed Shma, has been seriously wounded. He's getting up. Maybe he has a weapon on his hand? No, no, I haven't seen one yet. It is very important to uh, offer a voice to the voiceless. Uh, nobody really believes the people on the ground when they're trying to tell what uh, the war crimes are occurring. And that happened to the people there. Uh, so I offered to help with this in any which way possible. Bushmaster, Crazy Horse, we have individuals going to the scene. Looks like possibly uh, picking up bodies and weapons. A father driving his children to school catches sight of the injured man and stops to help him.